Hello, this is Peter from Ultimate Marketing Strategies and today I'm going to be taking a look at SE Cockpit. Um, SE Cockpit's a fairly revolutionary new keyword research tool and I've been using it for about three months now. Um, now, it's uh, we've, I've just logged in here and this is the, uh, the main dashboard on SE Cockpit. Now, it's important to note that um, it has a keyword research um, component which is obviously the the most important part it also has project and task modules that allow you to uh, track you know your particular websites keywords and tasks that you've got to do now I'm not going to cover that in, in this video there's I mean that they are, they are quite useful um, but obviously the keyword research part of it is the most important now the other thing I should also point out too this all runs in the browser um, so you don't have to worry about compatibility issues, and because it's running on a on a server or a cloud, yeah, you know, server cloud, it also means it's very fast and efficient, and uh, you don't have to worry about you know getting your IP banned from Google from doing excessive searches, and you don't have to worry about if your computer crashes or anything like that because it's all running in the background, and when you come back in, it's it's all there for you. Now. Uh, there's three types of plans. Uh, there's economy, business, and first class. I'm uh, using the economy plan, and yeah, I, I find that just fine. It's not as fast as the other ones, obviously, but um, what you can do is just uh, get everything going. You can run multiple searches at the same time, and it doesn't slow anything down. So I, I find that just fine. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll we'll go to uh, and do a keyword search now. I've got a few folders uh, I've set up in the past where I've saved some of my other searches so um, we'll, we'll have a look at folders in a moment so we'll do a new search okay and we'll choose a phrase let's um, I'm not going to use dog training everybody uses that one let's say sewing machines um, now one thing you'll notice uh, it has the uh, Google suggestions here so um, if you wanted to drill down into something more specific you can do that I'll, I'll leave it fairly generic at this stage um, <clears throat> now we've got some additional options over here this this one here um, if we want to only include specific terms or exclude uh, specific terms that can be quite useful because um, you know if you want to uh, narrow down your list you can use that one there's the Google suggest so that's uh, essentially the same as when you go into Google and you type in your keyword and then a space and then uh, an A will give you sewing machines and then A all the words that are long tail keywords that start with an A and then B right down to Z um, and same same for the numbers as well I'll, I'll leave that off for this example and uh, similarly for Google Wonder Wheel uh, you can, uh, if you have that set, you can set the number of levels that it can dig down in the Wonder Wheel. Now, what that will get you is a whole lot more keywords that uh, you wouldn't get in uh, most other keyword research tools. Okay, and again, you, as with most things, you can set the language and location. So I'll just, I'll just leave that as is, and I'll um, go and start that one off. Okay, now I should point out I have done a search on this keyword before, and the key uh, the results will be cached. They're um, cached for about thirty days, I think they are. So this comes back fairly quickly. But even when you're doing a new keyword search uh, on the economy plan, you know, it takes maybe one minute or two minutes at, at most for the results to come up. Okay, the first thing to note is uh, your seed keyword will have a little key icon there just so that you know what you did the search with and um, this next column here the niche column this is an important one and this is the default column that everything's sorted on so the bigger the green bar the better uh, in general now what that indicates it's a combination of number of searches for that keyword uh, it, look, it also looks at the competition for that particular keyword and, there, and there's a few other factors that are sort of uh, built in the calculation so 
anything that has you know high you know high niche value here is, is, is generally something you want to have a look at um, so we can see here sewing machines we've got our monthly searches that's exact uh, match searches nano phrase now this is where it becomes more useful and more interesting is you get a breakdown based on uh, on the uh, rank rankings on the first page so this orange bar here is the competition strength so for the first three places positions one to three there's a fairly high you know competition for that for that particular phrase sewing machines but if you were to get in positions one to three you could expect around 733 daily visitors um, here we got positions four to seven and then eight to ten and you can see the big difference you know, being in positions eight to ten you get around 17 daily visitors a day compared to 733 so yeah, yeah it might be okay to get on onto the first page in the lower ranks but you know you really do want to be in you know, positions one to three because that's that's where all the action is okay the uh, next column over here is um, just indicates where there's a blogger blog available for, uh, un under that particular uh, keyword um, yeah you know, as Google owns blogger yeah you know, having a blogger blog is uh, useful for you know, SEO uh, this one here indicates whether uh, there's a a YouTube account available for that particular um, keyword and again that's yeah also useful for for rankings as Google likes uh, videos uh, this column here will let you know which domains are available the ones that are blank means none of the main domains are available there might be a dot info or biz or what are the other minor ones still available which you can go and check yourself um, where it's got dashes it means for example, there's portable dash sewing dash machine dot net available, um, and you can say see the same there for com. Let's go down. Um, there's there's one with a dot net available, so sewing machine brother dot net is available. And then our last column, we've got uh, the CPC. So um, you know, if you're doing an ad AdSense campaign, you know that's obviously something you want to look at and you know, some people like to just check that the particular keyword they're going for has a minimum CPC rating <coughs> okay so let's 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 have a look at one of the ones that's um, doesn't have quite so much competition so let, let's see we can see this mini sewing machine here that gets uh, 2,900 monthly searches and uh, let's say 43 visitors daily visitors in the in the top three positions uh, what we can do is we can double click on that and what that will do will open up this uh, new tab and in here we can see the uh, details of the top 10 results for that particular keyword and we can uh, show the description there so we can see if the descriptions have the keywords in them as well. I'll turn that off for the moment. Uh, we can see the uh, web trends for that particular um, keyword because obviously you don't want to be on a, a go for a keyword that's on a, a downward trend unless it's you know something seasonal like a Christmas or some other theme. Um, now these columns here, the uh, SE cockpit. One one of the things it does differently is it uh, gets its a lot of its information from SE Moz. And if you're not familiar with SE Moz, it's um, what they do is they, they crawl the web just like Google does. Uh, obviously, their index is not as big, but um, they provide a lot more detail and, and it's also complete detail. Whereas Google, Yahoo will only, as you probably know, only show you a subset of information. And so, and their, their information is, is updated a lot more. So, this MozRank column is roughly equivalent to the Google PageRank, uh, but you can also say it's more granular. Uh, we've got a 3.4 and 5.6 there. Uh, page authority, that's that's a figure from uh, 1 to 100, or 0 to 100, um, and that gives you an indication of the authority of the actual page itself. 
domain authority gives you an indication of the uh, the authority of the domain so in this case we've got amazon.com in the top top two places and you know, obviously amazon.com is a high authority site so that's got a 90 95 um, place you know YouTube Wikipedia all those you know, ones will have a high domain authority now that domain authority is, is important because we can see here for these top two results there are no links at all so these these two pages are ranking purely based on on-page uh, factors plus the uh, domain authority of Amazon.com. Um, well, let, let, let's go down to this third one here. Here we've got um, yeah the the domain authority is a lot lower. It does have a particular uh, you know page authority and and MozRank for that particular page. It has a total of forty links, but of those forty links, only two are considered juice links. Now, juice links are um, yeah, considered to be links that are actually worthwhile, high quality links. You you could have hundreds of thousands of you know fairly worthless links, and they they don't really make a huge difference. But if you've got high quality links, you know that that is going to make a difference. So. Um, it gives you an indication you might see a high number of total links here. I mean, here's an example: um, Hancock Fabrics. There's eight thousand over, you know, eight and a half thousand links in total. But of those, none of those are juice links. Um, I've got no idea, you know, where most of those are. There could be pro, uh, who knows? But they're, they're they're obviously not worth that much. So that's that's one example where you could look at it and say oh there's a lot of links there but you know looking at the juice links a combination of domain authority and you know the fact it, it does have a highish uh, Moz rank but you know the um, on-page SEO is, is, is probably not that great so you know look at, looking at all that data there you can get a pretty good uh, indication of, of whether that's worth uh, going for so let's let's just go back to our, our main results here Let's let's say we're we were interested in a uh, few that we when we wanted to save it for later. So uh, let's let's say sewing machine repair um, mini. Um, let's choose Hello Kitty sewing machine and say cheap sewing machines. Okay, so what we could do is we could tag those. So uh, let's choose purple, for example. Now, if we'd ch chosen uh, the Wonder Wheel and the Google Suggest options, we would have quite a few results. But here we've got uh, 100. But that's still quite a lot to work with. So let's hide the untagged ones. So now we've just got this set here of the ones that we're interested in. Now, what we could do is we could go and expand the search and say we wanted to add you know, whatever other search term to that list, we we could keep going on forever. Um, and again, if you if you did that, you could go and say tag the new search with another color, or use it whatever filters to 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 build up your complete keyword set. Okay, well I won't do that for now. But so we've got our our four keywords there that we're interested in. So all we could do is create a folder to store those in for. Yeah, f future reference. So let's call that sewing machines, and then we'll just choose any icon. I'll choose the heart one. We'll do. So now I can just uh, go and put those into that particular folder there. So when after I've done a lot of searches, there, there might be a whole lot of stuff there that, you know, that I'll get rid of that I'm not really interested in. But uh, yeah, keep keep folder. I mean, I've got you know various categories here for bits and pieces that I've uh, say for f for future reference or for sites that I'm you know building based based on those keywords. Um, and uh, that is pretty much the sort of the, the basics of it there's there's a lot of stuff to SE cockpit um, but as you can see it is very easy to use it's very fast and it's incredibly effective I um, own quite a few keyword research tools and uh, 
I hardly ever get any of the others out now. I, it, it's just so much easier to use SE Cockpit, and I've found that the uh, results uh, it uh, returns are a lot more accurate than any of the other ones. So um, definitely, definitely worth uh, having a look at, uh, having a trial at least, and uh, I think you'll be impressed.